thank you very much. It's really a pleasure to be here. I want to talk to you about three incredible tipping points in renewable energy, two that have already happened and one that's about to happen. And I've been waiting for this moment pretty much all my life. I grew up in the San Fernando Valley in Los Angeles when I was 15 years old. The 1973 energy crisis struck, and there were long lines to buy gasoline in $5 rations. You had to wait in line to buy gasoline based on the last digit of your license plate on odd or even number days. And during that time, I didn't know anything about climate change. I didn't know anything about the energy wor world. I just knew that there had to be a better way. There had to be a better way to power our planet than by taking scarce, unevenly distributed resources and using it to power our lives. So I was really hoping there was something I could do about it, and I started a little tiny company called Solar Devices. Now, I'll talk about timing. I gave a whole TED talk on timing and how that's one of the most important things for a startup. Well, I was off by 45 years when I started that first company. Uh, this was uh, solar devices in high school, but I actually used it to pay my way through college. So I used it to maybe help me get accepted to Caltech and paid my way through Caltech by building these little solar devices, concentrators, and Stirling engines to help make some dent in the solar energy world. After that, 20 years later, I started Idea Lab as a technology incubator. And at Idea Lab, we've started companies of many different kinds, 150 companies across many areas, but more than 20 in the clean technology area. And I'll use that to segue to why is the clean technology opportunity so big right now, and what is the tipping point that's going on in the world right now? Well, the first reason is incredibly sustained investment. We have been spending more than $300 billion a year consistently, even with oil price swings, $300 billion a year, on building out renewable resources. And that is with the prices going down, so the actual amount of gigawatts we're putting in each year is going up pretty dramatically. Here's how the price has been going down. Wind has gone down 22 times in the last 30 years. Solar has gone down 100 times in the last 30 years, from $77 a watt to 77 cents a watt. And even in the last year, another factor of two decline, even with the tariffs on imports. So solar has gone down so dramatically in price. And what that led to is the very first tipping point a few years ago. The very first tipping point was when wind and solar became cheaper than building new anything else. Building a new power plant was relatively expensive, so wind and solar became cheaper than that. And that was the first turning point. Just happened just a few years ago. The second tipping point is now. Just right now, new wind and solar are now cheaper than existing power plants. So this, this means that it's not just the new stuff that you, have to, you, have, you can replace with renewable, but it's all power plants that you can replace. And the only problem, and the big problem, the one I'll talk about the third tipping point is, is solar and wind only put out power some of the time. Solar, typically about 20 to 25 percent capacity factor. You heard about the wind farm earlier that can get up to 50 percent capacity factor. But it can't replace base load. It can't replace a gas-powered power plant yet. And that need, leads to the next tipping point that we need to break through. The low costs have led to exponential growth. There's been exponential growth of solar installations around the world, not just the United States, but everywhere. China, Italy, Spain, United States, Germany, Japan, all of them are seeing exponential growth. There's a similar exponential growth of wind energy. Just because the price has come down, it's being deployed dramatically because now it can compete with not only new building, but old plants, except for the storage part. The investments going in are growing. I told you it was $300 billion a year, but it, it crossed all fossil fuel plant building in 2010, and it's continuing to accelerate. And if you look out going forward, you'll see that it'll be three times in a few years and five times by 2030. We'll be spending five times as much on renewable, new renewable plants than on all fossil fuel plants combined. The problem that happens is as renewables continue to grow, curtailment becomes a problem. Curtailment meaning we have too much energy at some time of day, not matching the load demand. This is a typical curve that might show a peak in solar power around noon but the peak in demand coming later in the day, maybe between 3 and 8 PM. We need to shift that somehow. We need to make renewables closer to base load. And that's been leading to this big investment in batteries. Batteries make up the majority of all the storage that we have in the world. However, if you take every battery in the world that we have today, it only adds up to about two minutes worth of storage. So it's a tiny, tiny piece of what we need to actually shift energy for six hours later in the day, or to the next day if it's a cloudy day or a not windy day. So we really, really need to have dramatic scale of storage. To date, the majority of that storage comes from pumped hydro. 
I'm going to tell you why I think storage is so important. I'll go back jokingly to the movie The Graduate in 1968, where he was, uh, Dustin Hoffman was told, plastics, plastics, that's the future of everything. And I'll go back 20 years ago at Idealab in the uh, internet search engine heyday when I said, keywords, keywords, that's the future of everything. We started a company called GoTo based on internet keywords, and it was a huge thing. And I'll say today, for the whole world, not just for the internet, it's storage. Storage is really everything. It will change everything if we dramatically ramp up the amount of storage we have. When you look at the storage that's out there today, 96% of every electron made that's stored is stored in pumped hydro. And that's because it's so cost effective. You pump water up a mountain, you let it run back down, you get energy back. It's about 75 to 80% round trip efficiency, so you get most of the energy back, you have some losses. But it's very, very cost effective. The problem is all the good spots on Earth have been used up. Anywhere where there's a hill that you can build a reservoir above and a reservoir below, someone's built that out. So now people are looking at all these other alternatives, compressed air, flywheel, thermal, and then all the chemical storage, all the different types of batteries. They're all currently too expensive, but we need research in all, those, all of those areas to get to that third tipping point. I want to tell you about one new idea that we're working on that hopefully can dramatically make an impact on that low-cost storage. It's this company called Energy Vault. What we're doing is trying to build pumped hydro, but not with water, that you can build a tower anywhere so we can have gravity storage in any location. And the way we're doing it is by having a sixth arm crane that lifts 35 ton blocks of recycled material into a tower. By using very inexpensive recycled materials, it's cheap enough to build the tower. And by using computer controlled cranes with vision software that automatically locates the blocks, automatically stacks them, automatically stacks and unstacks them, you can build something of between 35 megawatt hours and 65 megawatt hours very, very inexpensively. The round trip efficiency is almost 90%, so even higher than pumped hydro. Look at some of the low price PPAs for wind or PV that have been going on. There was a, 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 wind, a solar PPA in India for 3.9 cents, one in Dubai for 3 cents, one in Chile for 2.9 cents, one in the Emirates for 2.4 cents, and one in Nevada for 2.3 cents. The problem is it's only putting out sun power when the sun's out. But imagine a 2.3 cent PPA for PV added to 1.7 cents of storage, now you have 4 cents base load power. You finally have base load power that's competitive with the lowest priced natural gas plant on Earth. But it's, and it's continuous. You don't have to worry about the availability of the wind or the sun. This is why this is so exciting. When electrons are the most undifferentiated item on Earth. Everyone is identical. And yet we sell $1 trillion of them every year. So when you make electrons with solar or with wind that are 10% more than the cheapest electron, not too many people are interested. Maybe you can get 1% of the market, and that's sort of what we've gotten. When you can make electrons for 5% more expensive than the cheapest ones, maybe you can get 2%. But when you can make an electron for even 1% less than the cheapest natural gas or the cheapest fossil fuel electron, all of a sudden the market grows 100 times because then everything rushes. It's, it's a dramatic exponential demand when you can finally beat the price of the lowest price fossil fuel and do it with base load. So that's what we hope for in the coming decade. This is really only five or 10 years away. Research has to happen in all these areas to drive down the price of storage so we can actually beat fossil fuels with base load power. This is the five times cheaper that I believe we can get with this type of storage, but again, investment needs to happen in all these areas to try and drive down that price. This is our first demonstration of a, of a full crane computer controlled system that we built in Switzerland, and now we're working with partners to scale this. We're working with General Electric on the Low, the high efficiency motor generators, the one megawatt motor generators that lift and lower the blocks. We're working with ENG on the cranes. We're working with Semex to build these custom blocks that can hold the load, be light enough and cheap enough. And we'd love to talk to others here about potential ways we could partner together to take this to the world. I definitely believe we will get to majority renewable energy this century. There'll be many different solutions to get us there. It's really not just about saving the planet. It's an enormous economic opportunity. But it really, really is the fulfillment of a lifelong dream for me. I also personally believe that entrepreneurship is one of the best ways to mobilize great minds to tackle this difficult problem. So I'd love to talk to any of you here who are interested in entrepreneurship around any of these areas to try and make a big difference, a big positive impact on the world. Please contact me on bill.idealab.com, and I'll be available afterwards. I'd love to talk to you further. Thank you very much. You've been a great audience.